Hey guys, it's Mansion. Welcome or welcome back to my channel where we talk about blindness, mom stuffs, and plus size fashion. Today, we're going to be talking about living with someone who is newly blind. Your mother, your daughter, your father, your brother, your sister, your friend. Either way, if you have questions, I have answers. Before we get started, I wanted to show you guys something that we recently did in the house. You do not have to do this. I just want to make that clear. It is something that we did. For someone who just recently went blind, this could be super useful. Let me just show you guys what I am talking about. Okay, so right now I am sitting on the steps to my third floor. I'm not quite sure if you guys can see this. Along the top step, we have put a strip. So this is what it looks like if you were walking up the steps. It's just a runner of a carpet that goes straight up. And then when you get to the top, you have the metal strip that'll tell you to go down or up but i have one more thing to show you guys besides this i am now downstairs on the first floor in the entry hall i am going to show you guys the carpet that we laid from the door all the way to the step to the kitchen door as you can tell there is a runner i am standing on the hardwood but you can take this runner all the way to where they laid another carpet when you get to this carpet right here that means the steps are right in front of you or you have passed the two doorways that lead off of this hallway so i'm off the carpet and these are now the steps and then there's another door on my right and you can take this carpet all the way to the kitchen area now that is just a few ways that you can adapt your home for people who have recently lost their vision you do not have to do that again it is just something that we recently did so i thought it would be very interesting to show you guys something that occurs and that we blind people have to learn to adapt to is veering when we are walking we have to basically train ourselves to walk straight to keep our bodies in a straight line that way we don't overshoot we can get from point a to point b now let's talk about some tips that I have put together that I think you will find extremely helpful. Number one is to put things back where they belong. Organization is utmost important, especially when you're working with someone who is newly blind or visually impaired. Even if it is, say, putting the keys behind the lamp beside the table beside the door. If we need it, we can go over and then we can find it and we know exactly where it is, especially in the refrigerator. If you have in your life accidentally poured orange juice or some other juice in your cereal, leave a like on this video and drop me a comment in the comment box because that happens so often to people with regular vision. You know, if I'm sleepy enough and I'm not paying attention, I will grab the wrong bottle. But seriously, you don't know how upsetting it is when you're tired and it's morning time. And if you have children, you just want to get them their breakfast so that way you can get on to the next thing, finding their shoes, their book bags, and making sure they have everything so that way you can get out the door so that way they can get out the door. It can be a mess. So if you were to just put, say, the milk on the right-hand side on the top shelf and the juice on the left-hand side and just make sure those are always in that position it'll be easy for us to find that includes silverware in the kitchen knives especially make sure that when you put them away they are point down if you are living with someone who is newly blind blind or visually impaired make sure that those knives when you clean them when you put them away they are point down we can tell what it is by the handle we do not need to be pricked in the fingers to know what it is the medicine cabinet is a disaster Tell me, have you ever gone into the bathroom at night or during the morning or whenever and you were really tired or you had a really bad headache and you just reach into the medicine cabinet? Those bottles, the way they stack up in there, you knock one over, the rest go tumbling down. It's like a domino effect in there. I now have my own medicine cabinet. Therefore, I can go into the medicine cabinet and get what I need because I know exactly where I put it. And it's not a domino effect. It's not stressful. I can find things as I need them. And also the bathroom. If you can have your own caddy in the shower, that is really helpful because then you know exactly where you put your shampoo, where you put your conditioner, where your soap is. It helps to have bottles that are different shapes and different sizes, honestly, because then you could just remember what is what. I do believe herbal essences, they have recently started making bottles 
that have different stripe patterns on the bottom of the bottle so that way you can tell which one is the conditioner and which one is for the shampoo. This doesn't affect just blind people. When you're sighted and your eyes are closed because there's water in your eyes and you don't want to get soap in your eyes, you don't know what's what. So wouldn't it be beneficial if you knew what bottle was what? You could mark the bottle with tape, you can mark it some other way so that way you know this one is the shampoo and then this one is the conditioner. Soap and soap bottles are usually different so that's not too difficult but still having your own space that you can organize to make sure you know what you're picking up when you're in the shower or when you're taking care of your bathroom needs is definitely handy. Now this is for those parents who have a child who is blind or visually impaired. When unpacking or organizing their room, you may want to jump in and help them put their things away in their room. I'm gonna tell you not to. What you should do is take them around the room and help them get used to the layout, where the dressers are, where the bed is, what space, what drawers they have. If they're young, sit down with them and see where they want to put things. If they're older, let them make up that decision on their own because they are the ones who have to find it. They are the ones who have to learn to be independent. So that is also another organization tip let them do it themselves and let them get familiar with it. Stay organized. If you are somebody who in your home everything has its place, then you would be wonderful to live with. My next tip is to keep things clean. We blind people touch everything. That doesn't mean when we're out at a restaurant or shopping because we want to touch the clothes because we do that, but I mean in the house too. We touch everything. Walls, handrails, tables, chairs. So that cup on the counter that we're going to touch while we're walking by, push it way back in the counter because if it's there, we're gonna find it and we're gonna knock it over. And with keeping things clean also involves furniture. Do not move furniture if you can help it. If you move furniture, make sure that you move it back. Footstools, chairs, tables, coffee tables. I swear, if something is moved just an inch, I can tell because I'm gonna find it. I'll run into it and I'll be like, yeah, you moved it. And I'll be rubbing the part of my person that uh, hurts from it because I do not walk slowly. Blind people do not walk slowly. So when we run into something, we run into something and it hurts. That also means doors, cupboard doors, bathroom, bedroom, doors. If it's a cupboard door, do not leave it half open. Either leave it closed or leave it open. But make sure that we know that, hey, we're gonna leave this open. Hey, we just kinda leave these doors closed. It has to be something that we know, leave them open or leave them closed. Please do not leave them in the halfway position. And now this may seem a little crazy, but if you are leaving the premises, please let the blind person know that you're leaving. You do not necessarily have to tell them where you're going but I feel like that's polite so that way they know where you're going so that way they're in the know. Please let us know when you're leaving. I can't tell you how annoying it is if someone leaves and you're walking around the house and you're calling their name but no one is there. Also, if that blind person was the only one home and they knew you weren't supposed to be home until, I don't know, eight o'clock or so, but it was five o'clock and someone was in the house or at the door, they heard noises, they'll know that's not you. So therefore they need to call you or call whoever just to make sure that they are safe, regardless if it's a neighbor or 911. Let us know where you're going. I know some people hate that because you know, privacy and all, but let us know where you're going. And last, but certainly, certainly not least is to talk about it. Have some communication, questions and answers, just a general chat. Every blind person has their own limitations and preferences. Have a talk about what would be easy for you and easy for them and try to come up to some common ground, some middle ground. Ask them if there's a way that you can make this easier or that easier for them and try to figure out what you can do to accommodate that. Some blind people are neat freaks and they know where everything is that they put, that you put, that their neighbor put when they came over. Other people are kind of like, have you seen my shoes? Where did I leave them? In my opinion, I feel like every blind person needs their own space, their own corner. That way they know exactly where their things are. Plus, our technology is really expensive. I don't know if you ever looked up the prices for some of that stuff. Just to help our computers talk, it's like $1,000. They have a new program where you can pay $99 a year, but still, that's a year. That's for something that we need, like need, to actually be able to work our computers. That doesn't include the cost 
of the computer or other things that we may need. Like some people who have vision loss still have vision, so they can use like magnifiers and other type of technology. All this stuff is so expensive, you guys. So we need our own corners. Just in my personal opinion, don't think of living with a blind person as scary. It's the same as a sighted person. You both have to adapt, make changes, just be mindful and talk it out. That's all. Well guys, that's all I have for you today. Please excuse the background. I feel like everyone is out on their cars today and the insects and just, it is a nice August night. So hopefully you guys found this very useful and interesting. Subscribe, leave me comments, and we will see you in the next video.